My name is Matt. Um, I am the founder of a company called MetaShift. Um, we're a strategic management consultancy and we help employers and recruitment companies um, understand the innovations that are going on in marketing, in social media um, and in mobile marketing. Um, and that's pretty much what I'm going to talk about today. So, um, everything that I'm talking about with regards to social media today is all about marketing and branding, whether that's um, clients um, or candidates. Uh, I'm not talking about social media for sourcing, for finding candidates, for all that kind of stuff. Um, there are millions of um, conferences and talks that, uh, that do that. Um, and really, I kind of want to hone in on what, what was being talked about earlier um, in terms of helping you make your businesses stand out from all the noise, um, and also using social to engage with candidates um, to kind of pre-build those pipelines so they're much more likely um, to respond to you when you actually, when you actually need them. So um, having spent a huge amount of time looking at uh, how recruitment organizations, um, employers, and pretty much everyone in our industry is using social media, um, th this is kind of my conclusion. So um, I think we're still very much at that experimentation stage. Um, and this is quite unfortunate because the audiences that we're trying to reach are. Um, to the audiences we're trying to reach, social media um, is absolutely um, the norm. It's the way that people communicate. Um, in your context of not being recruiters, um, you, probably, you, you probably use various kind of social media platforms, um, various social media platforms all the time. Um, but for whatever reason, um, I think we find it quite difficult in our industry um, to actually work out how to use um, these platforms for the best, um, for the best possible, um, for the best possible value. So. Because of that, in this presentation, I want to go back to absolute basics. So I think the trouble with lots of presentations I see about social media is they focus on the tools, they focus on all the cool things you can do, um, they focus on case studies that aren't relevant, all those kind of things. Um, and I want to get back to what I see as the three absolute basics of understanding social media for marketing. Because I think if you can understand um, these three concepts, then everything makes more sense, and whatever social media you're currently doing, um, you can do a lot better. And I'm sure there are probably people in the room who are already doing um, some of these things pretty well. So the three concepts I'm going to talk about, social graphs, sharing, and social proof. So um, this is a social graph. Um, a social graph is just a way of describing how we all know each other. So um, probably the biggest social graph, um, the biggest tool to plot social graphs that we all use um, is LinkedIn. So the reason that um, social media platforms are growing so very quickly, the reason that LinkedIn seeing the kind of growth they were talking about in the earlier presentation, um, is because we're all connected to each other. So um, you know, within this room, um, we're all we're here now. There's a number of people that I know. Um, the way that um, you know, you, your consultants, your businesses, the, the sheer size of the potential reach of social graph that you have um, is absolutely enormous. Um, and to illustrate that, this is actually my LinkedIn network. So 4,000 connections on LinkedIn um, gives me a network of 18 and a half million professionals. So the audiences here are absolutely vast. Um, and they're only kind of one or two or three degrees away um, from what you're doing and what you're, what you're sharing. So that's the kind of founding principle around all of this. The second one is sharing. So um, it's a picture of Mark Zuckerberg, um, who you'll probably recognize. Um, you may not recognize the um, ridiculous uh, algebraic uh, concept on the right. Uh, this is Mark Zuckerberg's law of sharing. So um, he first kind of presented this at a conference with geeks. Um, and as geeks only speak algebra, he had to kind of present it in a sort of algebraic format. Um, the translation is below. The amount of stuff we will share today is twice as much as the amount of stuff we will share a year ago. Sharing is growing exponentially. Now, this is very, very self-serving for Facebook, as we'll see in a second. But I think it's very true. I think our um, capacity to share things with each other online, wherever we, wherever we kind of are in our comfort zone, we're probably sharing a lot more than we did a year ago. Um, whenever you kind of read about social media in traditional media, broadcast media, um, it's always about privacy. It's like these things are a threat to our privacy. Um, people are very, very um, 
defensive of their privacy, um, and, and this is not right. But actually, this is all about sharing. And while we worry about our privacy, um, we're actually sharing more and more things. Um, I think I read a stat this morning that uh, Facebook has half a trillion photos or something utterly ridiculous that, um, um, that, that people are sharing. So um, really kind of huge amounts of, um, huge amounts of stuff. So sharing is so important um, because basically, partly you want to produce content that's shared, but all of the major social networks rely on sharing to function. So um, <coughs> seems like a presentation of boring, um, boring algebra algebraic formulas. Um, this is actually Facebook's um, algorithm. Um, I won't go to it in detail because I haven't got time, but basically um, the whole of the Facebook platform depends on sharing. The more content is shared, the more that content appears on Facebook. So the whole of Facebook is based around people sharing content with their social graphs. So is Twitter. Um, anyone recognize this picture? Um, this is the most retweeted um, picture on Twitter ever. It's from last year. It's just after uh, Barack Obama won the presidential election. Um, and this picture was retweeted 700,000 times. So it was viewed by probably hundreds of millions of people um, being shared on a platform on Twitter. So again, Twitter is all about sharing. Google is now all about sharing. Um, Google launched Google Plus a little while ago. Um, Google Plus doesn't get talked about very much um, in social media presentations because um, it doesn't have a huge amount, a huge amount of engagement. Um, and the other networks are considered to kind of be better trafficked but incredibly important for search engine optimization. So if any of your businesses rely on SEO um, for their candidate or client traffic, and I'm sure all of them do, um, Google Plus is very important to that. And Google is putting sharing at the center of its algorithm. So basically, sites that are shared on Google Plus that have plus one get a be better search rankings than site that, sites that don't. So sharing is an essential part of Google as well. Sharing is also <laughs> becoming a central part of LinkedIn. Um, so one of the things that um, I noted in the earlier um, presentation was about LinkedIn Insights, um, about LinkedIn Today, about content being delivered. Um, and that's all about content being shared. So personally, I found LinkedIn to be a very, very powerful tool, not just to find people to do business with, but to actually share interesting content, to have conversations, to get engagement, um, to have likes, to have shares, to, to reach kind of huge audiences um, within the 18 million people in my LinkedIn um, in my LinkedIn graph. So social graph really kind of dictates the size of the opportunity. Um, and sharing really drives all of this. Um, and the reason I'm emphasizing it so much is I don't think um, when people are doing social media marketing, they're necessarily thinking about, actually, they need to market stuff that's going to be shared. Because sharing is what all of these platforms are about. The third concept is social proof. Um, and despite the jargon, it's something that you guys will all be familiar with. Um, anyone use TripAdvisor to pick hotels? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much most people. Um, in fact, there's so much content on TripAdvisor, it gets a bit confusing. Um, you know, I get torn when I'm trying to decide where to stay between the uh, 50 million reviews of it on there. Um, but basically, whenever we're making decisions about anything these days, whether it's uh, going on holiday, buying a camera, buying a washing machine, reading a book, um, what film we're going to watch at the weekend, whatever it is, um, we're valuing the feedback of strangers massively. So whether that's going on to TripAdvisor, whether that's reading Amazon reviews, um, actually, we believe um, the feedback that we read um, much more than we believe the company's, um, the company's own marketing. So um, I'm in the market for a new camera at the moment. Um, I've read all the marketing from the company that makes it. Um, I'm now in the process of looking at reviews to see what people really think, people who actually use, people actually use, the, use the camera. Um, and we do this in our networks as well. We do this in our social graphs. So um, how many people have watched a film because one of their Facebook friends said it was really good? Um, quite, a few, quite, a, quite a few people. So that whole concept of social proof is really, really important. Um, and out of all of the three, I think that's the one that we probably um, don't capitalize on the most um, in the recruitment industry. You know, LinkedIn endorsements, LinkedIn recommendations, um, sites like Glassdoor, um, these are all social proof, um, social proof in action. So really, um, <clears throat> I think 
these three concepts are kind of vital in terms of understanding all of the social media activity that you're doing. Are you exploiting um, social graphs? Are you producing content or discussions that are shareable? Um, and are you providing the social proof um, that you're the best company to you know, place that candidate, fill that role, whatever, whatever it is? So they're the top level concepts. Um, in terms of well, what's actually emerging, um, what are people doing? What are the techniques that they're using um, when it comes to social media marketing? Um, again, <clears throat> there are kind of three main ones that I've spotted. Now, because of reasons of time, I can't talk about all of them in um, great detail. So I'm going to talk about um, content marketing um, sort of principally for the rest of the presentation. Um, but what I will say is I think that most, um, uh, most of the recruitment industry is kind of stuck in the automation phase. So when people are doing social media, um, it's about looking at social media channels and as, an, as, as a kind of a new form of job board. Um, so, you know, if we put our jobs on Twitter, if we put our jobs on Facebook, um, we're fine, we've done social media, big tick in the box. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't work, because sometimes, um, anecdotally, I do hear some sort of positive, um, you know, some positive feedback that that's actually driving, um, you know, driving success for people. But it's a tiny, tiny, tiny part of the picture. Um, and I think there is so much more um, that you can probably do as a business to really kind of exploit um, really kind of exploit these channels. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to focus on with a really cool example um, is the whole idea of content, um, the whole idea of content marketing. So this is basically producing interesting content that's going to engage your audience, that's going to get shared, um, and is going to kind of help you build your brand, help you build that pre-engagement with, um, you know, with a talent pool, help you win new business, stand out from your competition. So um, lots of interesting examples, but I wanted to show you my favorite, um, my favorite ever um, company Facebook recruitment page. So there's a bit of an oil and gas theme to this, uh, to this room. I mean, before the, great, the, the, the break, um, there was an oil and gas recruitment company. But anyway, this is the uh, Facebook page of uh, Maersk Oil, who are <coughs> big a um, big Danish oil company. Um, and this is a really interesting case study. Basically. They um, have to recruit, you know, they have to recruit thousands of people, um, principally from their competitors, um, and they wanted to use social media to kind of help them do that, to help them build an employment brand, um, to help them source candidates, to help them um, in this impossible task to get sort of three or four thousand people out of their out of their competition and in, into them, um, into them as an employer. So they did all of their research. Um, they looked into the channels that will work for them. Um, obviously, I'm sure they do loads of things on um, LinkedIn. However, um, they actually found um, that Facebook was going to be a very good channel for them. Um, now, this kind of didn't make any sense to me when I, when I heard this, because um, you know, surely Facebook isn't where you go to recruit, um, you know, recruit experienced subsea engineers. Is it or is it? Um, interestingly, um, a lot of their target audience spend a huge amount of time offshore. Um, and when they're offshore, their principal uh, method of communicating with their friends and family is Facebook. So actually, Facebook reg registered very, very highly um, in their audience. Um, and that's probably the first lesson of all of this. Um, the company actually, rather than kind of using existing prejudices, um, thinking about, you know, what, well, what, do I, what platforms do I use? What platforms do people that I know use? They actually did some research and looked at what platforms does our target audience use um, and how do they use them? So they settled on Facebook. Um, you might not be able to see this, but basically this page has 30,000 likes. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a recruitment page with as many likes as that. Um, I could be wrong. There may be someone in the room who has 60,000 likes. If so, I can only apologize. Um, there are also 3,500 people talking about this now. So that's 3,500 people who are commenting, liking, sharing on this page. So this is potentially a huge talent pool if these people are the right people. So what is it that this company is doing to engage with this audience? What is the sophisticated um, content marketing that they're using um, to drive this engagement, to drive these likes? What is it? What is the secret source that they've, cracked, that they've kind of cracked open to do this? It's pictures of oil rigs <laughs> and big ships and drills, basically. Now, um, again, um, not something obvious, but they found by experimenting that actually um, these guys, um, the guys they like, they're the guys they're trying to recruit, really like the kit that they work with. So the ships that they live on, the, the drills that they use, um, 
the helipads they build, all, the, all this kind of stuff. So um, there are other things on this page, but by far the most engaged with stuff um, are pictures of, <laughs> pictures of um, uh, big machinery. Um, this picture here, which is a picture of one of their ships, uh, or maybe an oil rig, I'm not sure, uh, 63 people have shared that into their social graph on Facebook. Um, 628 people like this picture, but more importantly, you'll see here, give me a job. <laughs> give me a job, roused about. Um, so these are people who are actually asking, um, asking the companies to give them a job. Um, and what they're doing is they're responding and they're basically sending them to their careers page. They're not doing any kind of sophisticated in Facebook recruitment here. Um, they're just doing kind of very simple, put content up, generate interest, send people to our website. When they did the research, they found that the people who are asking for jobs on their page are actually their target audience. Because um, they could look and see where most of these people worked, um, and many of them were working for their target audience. So um, here's another example. This is a particularly um, good way of doing content marketing, because what they've done here is they've reused some content. So they have a blog, um, and <clears throat> someone's basically blogging about um, a project that they're doing in Singapore, um, and they've posted that blog to Facebook. Um, but basically, rather than post that blog to Facebook as some kind of automated link to save time, um, they've positioned it and they've actually kind of written um, a little introduction to say what it's about. And it's about the, um, the, the massive size of this helipad. Um, again, 68 shares, 425 people like it, um, and someone asking for a job. So um, this is just a really interesting case study because it's just not what you expect at all. It's not the platform you expect, it's not the content you expect, um, and the results are, the results are pretty impressive. Um, and really the kind of moral of this tale is all about understanding your audience and doing what your audience wants you to do um, and engaging with them that way. It's not about um, preconceived ideas of what you think might, what you think might work because sometimes, um, sometimes the truth can be quite surprising, as we can see there. Um, the other kind of quick thing to sort of mention um, about content marketing before I go and talk about something, um, the, the, the next thing, um, is, is platforms. Now, sometimes um, we talk about Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter as if they're the, as if they're the only platforms in the world. Um, and again, different audiences may interact with different platforms. So um, this is an example from SlideShare, um, which coincidentally is actually owned by LinkedIn, but it's um, um, a very different platform. Um, this is a presentation that was put up there on the secrets of being a successful graduate. Um, the presentation is 113 slides long, um, so it's not a bite-sized piece of content. It's actually a bit of content that you really want to engage with. Um, and it's got 313,000 um, views, basically. So, um, there are some other interesting content platforms out there, um, and all of this is experimenting with different types of content as well. Um, what I've noticed in recruitment, um, we absolutely love the written word. Um, you know, we love doing updates that are text-based. Um, our audience love photos and videos um, and slide share and, thing, and things like that. So again, there's a, again, there's a mismatch. Um, we really have an over-reliance on copy, um, and actually photos and videos are far more, uh, are far more powerful. Um, why are more companies not doing this brilliantly? Because it's really hard. So um, when I kind of describe this, um, you know, it sounds like a fairly simple process. Um, we'll go out, we'll take some pictures of oil rigs, um, we'll, be, we'll be great, we're in the oil and gas industry, um, we're recruiting loads of people. Um, there is so much noise out there, there is so much stuff, there is so much content. Um, you know, there must be one day I'll do a bit of research into how many articles on writing the perfect CV there are, um, and I reckon there's probably I reckon there's probably millions. So um, this stuff is quite is quite difficult to do. Um, really, kind of getting that signal, you know, getting a signal through the noise, really standing out, um, is is not is is not easy. And um, because of that, I think it's taking us as an industry um, a long time to kind of really get up to speed and really, um, you know, really see the advantages of this um, for recruitment. So. Um, the question is, well, why should, you know, well, why bother? If it's this difficult, if so many other people are doing it, um, why should we bother? Um, and the reason we should bother is basically the world has changed. The way that marketing is has changed. The way that communication is has changed. Um, I saw this example last night, actually. There was a brilliant program about um, 
um, the future of retail and how digital and mobile were kind of driving the future of retail. Um, and basically, um, ASOS, which is an online clothing company that some of you may be, a bit, be aware of, um, apparently their key demographic is 25 to 34, which is why I've never heard of them. Um, but basically, um, they're, a, they're a, I think they're a UK or they're a UK based company. Um, they're now the number one um, online clothing retailer in Australia. Um, and they spent zero money on traditional marketing to get there. In fact, it wasn't even their plan to get there. Um, they were going to expand to America next. Um, they expanded to Australia because people were sharing their content on social media. Um, they do Pinterest brilliantly. Um, you know, they have a great Facebook page. Um, people were basically sharing, <coughs> sharing their products in social media. Um, and it took them to be number one in, that, you know, in the Australian market in their, um, in their sector. Now, that's an incredible opportunity. Um, and I don't think in our industry we've really cracked this yet. So why bother? Because there's a brilliant opportunity to stand out. If you think about this, um, do it properly and really find out the best way of engaging, the best way of engaging with your audience. Um, <clears throat> the final point is the world is still changing. So social's kind of changed a lot about what we're, gonna, what, what we're doing. Um, but the mobile channel is changing everything even further. So I'll explain why this is relevant to social media in a second. Um, this is a graph that projects the growth of the mobile internet. And it basically, at some point this year or some point next year, there will be more internet traffic on mobile phones than there is on desktops. So um, this is a kind of a fundamental change. Someone asked me why I think this is so important. If you change the way the internet works and the, inter the way the internet looks, and the way that people engage with the internet. You change the internet, and if you change the internet, you change digital recruiting. If you change digital recruiting, you change recruiting. So I think we're on the cusp of an even bigger change. Um, this is very relevant to this presentation because something like 73% of social media usage is done on the mobile. So if, as an organization, you're spending a huge amount of time um, engaging in social media, building up social media content, if you don't have a mobile presence to ultimately send people to, um, then you could be wasting your time. So um, <clears throat> in this case, four out of five users of Facebook um, use it on their phone every day. Um, and it's a really, really interesting example of um, convenience over quality. Um, anyone who's used Facebook on a mobile phone um, will know that their app isn't very good. It's a far better experience to use it um, on a desktop but it's a far more convenient experience to use it on a mobile. Um, and interestingly, something like two thirds of mobile internet usage actually happens in the home. So when I talk to people about mobile recruiting, um, they kind of think about people on trains looking for jobs. Um, but actually, our tablets and our phones um, are becoming our first, our first port of call. Um, our first port of call when, when we're looking for stuff on the internet. So if you're doing social, um, I strongly believe you have to be doing mobile as well, basically. Um, I remember I talked about Google <coughs> a little bit earlier and Google kind of getting into the sharing, um, you know, getting into the sharing space. So Google putting sharing at the, at the, at the, at the center of their search algorithm. Um, <coughs> they're just about to do the same with mobile. So basically, if you don't have a mobile website, a mobile optimized website, a site that works well on mobile, um, Google will start penalizing your search ranking, um, which again is probably high significant, significant for some of you in the room. Um, one stage further than that, they've also announced that if your, site, if your mobile site doesn't allow it download quickly enough, they'll also penalize your search ranking, or they'll penalize your search ranking more. Um, and a quick download time on mobile is about one, anywhere between one and two seconds. Um, so some quite significant um, changes coming to digital marketing as we know it that's being driven by, um, that's being driven by social and being, that's been being driven by mobile. Um, the reason Google's done this um, is because it's what users, it's what they're saying users want. The reason we know users want this um, is because of what happens with sites like Amazon. So um, Amazon has worked out that for every 100 milliseconds of speed improvement they can add to the download times of their Amazon web pages, their revenue goes up by 1%. Um, 
Um, so there's a real correlation here, um, you know, between revenue, between engagement, between social, <coughs> and between mobile. Um, so to summarise, so we've got time for questions and time to uh, get you over to see the, uh, um, the, the, the keynote on the other side of the building. Um, Social is really mainstream. Your, your audience is there, and whether that audience is graduates or you know people on oil rig or um, whoever it is, um, they're using social media. Um, expectations are rising. Um, people are expecting to get information quicker. They're expecting to be able to find out um, things in their social networks. Um, I saw someone asking a question on Twitter um, the other day. Um, is there a comparison site for recruitment consultants? Because they because they because they couldn't find one. I know there's some emerging um, things in that space, but I'm sure there'll be um, you know many more very soon. Techniques are emerging. Uh, people are doing interesting things um, with these channels, and it's worth kind of paying attention uh, to what works. Um, and mobile is absolutely um, absolutely vital in all of this. So that was a kind of a very quick overview. Didn't really have time to go into a huge amount of detail, but I hope there were um, a couple of interesting um, facts in there.